Fairly recently, we talked about Dishonored 2 and the improvements since the original Dishonored, which primarily focused on the story, or more specifically, the endings. As I said in my previous video, in the original Dishonored, you basically had two set paths, and that was it. You had the sort of good ending or the bad ending, or to be more accurate, it would be the low chaos ending and then the high chaos ending, which was directly linked to how many people had you killed throughout the game. And there was a line, as soon as you cross that line, that was it. Now, as I discussed before, that's something they're going to be improving. It's going to be a bit more fluid, and it's going to actually react to like use, like conversation options and uh, you know th other things of that nature. And now we have some more comments from Arcane, or more specifically, game director Harvey Smith, about what's going to be happening with the new chaos system and the ending implications. Now, he talked about these things during the latest Game Informer show. In which he said, quote, we have more end games that are based on branches based on your active actions rather in the world, like who you supported or didn't support, or killed or didn't kill. Then we have optimistic or cynical versions of each depending on chaos. So chaos factors in that way. It also factors in how many blood flies and infestations there are across the city, how thick the grand guard is in some places, and some voice lines here and there. Also the tonal reaction of the protagonist, Corvo and Emily, their lines sometimes change based on that. We track three different states of chaos, low chaos, high chaos, and very high chaos. We dynamically locate at the start of each mission a morality to the characters around you. Most of them are what you would call guilty and they're worth a certain amount of chaos. A smaller set are sympathetic and they're worth more chaos. Another, s another small set are murderous and they're worth less chaos. Some people just need killing. It's a more nuanced approach in response to players' feedback, and yet at the same time we hold onto our values just saying if you don't murder everyone in the streets, you're less disruptive to the world. The ending uses a permutation system. So there are several different pieces of the ending that play, and each one of those have, like in some cases, two states, in some cases five states, in others maybe a couple more than that. And then all of them have high-low chaos permutations, and a couple of spots at very high chaos permutations. Now another thing he touched on in this particular event is he touched on the heart which as you recall from the original Dishonored was a gift from the outsider and will give you contextual information on targets as well as leading you to various things to improve your upgrades and a few other bits as well and it's back and even more improved in the sequel and he said, quote, Early on we said, let's make sure the heart is better supported this time because people really liked it. We had people on the first game playing the entire thing and deciding who to kill based on what the heart said to them. This time it can be more literally true. You can gather information about the characters in terms of morality and worthiness as a human being by pointing the heart at them and listening. So, if indeed what he says is true, and of course there's no reason not to believe it is true, isn't true rather, until we actually play the game, then it sounds pretty damn promising. I really, really enjoyed the original Dishonored, but the sort of rigidness of the endings and the sort of background dialogue and the story itself were definitely the weakest part of an all-round very good game indeed. And it sounds like Dishonored 2 is going to be a huge improvement on that already well-executed formula, and it sounds like they are addressing the core issues that the original suffered from and it sounds like the next Dishonored is going to be worth multiple playthroughs with multiple different play styles as well so there's not just low chaos versus high chaos there's even different methods for each of them and it seems like they have not each human life isn't worth the same amount of chaos you know if you kill someone who's a murderer it's obviously going to have less impact on the world but if you kill someone who's generally a good person then obviously that's going to have a huge impact and will probably be worth a significant chunk of chaos which is a more fluid more realistic way of doing it and will probably lend a bit more sort of agency to the world and to the characters as well and if you've got someone who's going out of their way to kill these nice people quote unquote nice or you know avoiding them and maybe tranquilizing them and only going after the people who really deserve it then obviously that's a bit different compared to someone who's just going to be like full on genocide mode or whatever so it sounds like it's going to be a very flexible game indeed if indeed he has the right of it which of course until we play it we don't know one way or the other but it sounds really really promising and i can't wait to get my hands on dishonored 2 in november so do let me know your thoughts and opinions as always thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already it does help out a great deal and i'll see you next time